Welcome tribe. <laughs> Here comes another episode with the Ripper, which is far, far overdue, I guess. It's about the Turing thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got some footage ready for you and I will share it happily with you. So, what will you see in this episode? In this episode, I will show you how I went through the tuning process and encountered my mm, slight difficulties and uh, oddities with Aina 3. Point whatever. Uh, so, um, this will be a video with several flights, as you are used to, and we will start off with the tuning. Head on! And buckle up, this is gonna be hard. Just FPV. It's not that a happy occasion I'm filming this because I just landed. Well, that's not unusual. <laughs> I tend to do so. But I landed um, um, unwanted, unintentionally. No, I didn't crash. Well, Perhaps I did some sort of, let me tell you. So, here we are. Let's have a look at the pits and rates before we start the tuning process. You'll see the normal pits and uh, some initial rates. And then, uh, now we'll fly and have a look at the rates after that. And we are up. Stock consumption about 15 amps, that's fine and fair enough. Here we cruise about with 5 to 8 amps consumption depending on the force we just push the wing through and we are going to start the tuning immediately. As I had reduced my rate speed rather conservative and agile, the wing opens up as it is allowed to do so and changes the rates for roll to something tremendously. But more on that in a minute. And on that point of the tune, I felt it was going some steroids. Uh, much too agile for my taste, but uh, of course that depends to your likings. For me, it was just too much to fly a car, and I don't like that. So yeah, maybe we are going too high. You can see how reactive, responsive it is. So, yeah, tuning, does tuning. Yeah, right. <laughs> But when we look at the results, and uh, for that moment, uh, it was pl flying pretty good, actually. I must admit, yeah, right. It flies pretty good. Uh, the roll is okay for, for the stability, but pitch is a bit too bumpy for my taste. Could be the wind. You see here, it's bouncing up and down. That's not a thing I like. No. We'll have to take a look at that. Although the pitch rates are raised, and look at the feed format value. That was the initial tune, and I think uh, it's okay-ish, I guess. I have to figure what's on. It's still bumpy here and there. Okay, there's some wind. We have to admit it's a small wing, which is affected by the wind, but hi, that must be more. So we finish the uh, tuning for that point and can set for the first landing. Oh, and by the way, have a look at the altitude. It reads far below zero. Ah. Not good. You know the drill, ladies and gentlemen. First comes the work, and then comes the pleasure. And at this point of the tune, I decided it was time to test out what I've tuned there. So, yeah, I gave it a little flight. Are you ready to go some strange places?
Planet Row. <laughs> bit much, I guess. <laughs> well, we are back in the story, and we're going to that detail where we will land unintentionally. Now, something strange happens. I'm not that far away and have a look, have a look, have a look what happens exactly now. RTH. Got no control over the bird anymore. It's gone. It's doing its thing. I know it kicks in and uh, tries to save the bird. What happened to the plane? It's the Ripper. I am telling you anything about the Ripper. First of all, I took the beating pretty well. Uh, my construction with the battery seems to work out uh, pretty, pretty good. Um, things came out, the hood popped off, nothing really bad. The um, wood for my, the plywood for my, my run cam ha camera just broke in two, but you see it yeah, I found a weak spot on the river. Maybe you will get there too someday, I hope not. If it gets down on the nose, it cracks here. And that's the, that's the first um, thing to notice. The second thing is, I'm grateful. I'm grateful this happened because anything else would be hmm, fatal perhaps. Because this is just easy fixed. Just put some uhu pour or whatever glue you use in and it will stick together like, you know what. And just work again. Nothing special, nothing bad, nothing you will see. Uh, honestly, can you see anything besides whether just give it a little push here and push the where are the cracks? Where are they? I can't see them. They're here. Okay. Let me let <laughs> shall we take make the wing pot talk now? Hello? No. Just kidding. Back to business. Um it landed. Thanks for that. I know. And uh, what shall I do? Here we are, well, put, put my stuff together and, uh, yeah, hmm, it was a nice flight, it was a nice flight. Um, takes on beating the wing, so, yeah, real life situations, the thing broke, but I'll fix it and we'll fly it again like we stole it. Well, I've got installed 9 of 3.0.1, uh, first flight with that today. And I must say, yeah, well, um, that thing with this auto tune is nice. Um, but now my PIDs are so agile that I don't really, it doesn't really make me happy. So I have to adjust on the rates a bit and then head over, do it again. That's how the ripper really went down. Um, it was no big deal though, because I, as I mentioned in the, live footage from back then um, I just glued it on everything's good no problems no buggies 
nothing you have to complain or worry about. This will do. The Ripper is a tough brother and it breaks at the nose. Always. I've seen it in three videos already. It's, that's the sweet, <laughs> the sweet breaking point. That's a sweet spot. That's the weak point. Yeah. But then again, uh, the problem wasn't uh, high enough. The problem wasn't with Express LRS. The problem was simply me because I had a cold soldering spot on the pin, on the ground pin from the receiver of uh, the Express LRS and that caused the failsafe. So there's nobody to complain more about just about me because my fault. And what I did was just uh, fix that cold solder point and uh, thanks to uh, Wes for the hint. We talked about this and he said, well, did you check it has power? And I said, well, yeah, wait, wait a minute. Oh, damn it. You're right. <laughs> so yeah, that was a problem and we fixed it and sorted it and um, then it went out again. And yeah, um, it does. It flies. It's really good. Um, Next up, uh, we are looking at the video where we will be tuning the wing in the evening, if I am right. And uh, that was pretty cool. My my uh, friend uh, with um, the Almini was with me, and uh, we had a blast that evening. So yeah, uh, have a look. One of those wonderful evenings, and we are out in the field and tuning our mini wings with Anna 301. better wasn't it yeah the setting about the the rate limit for roll was pretty important because if you have this much such a small wing and enough termines uh, the rate has to be about 530 degrees per second that's a bit high usually you're up at uh, 200 when you start off and I reduced it further and further and went on with reducing it to 60 which uh, then again was a bit too low, I guess. So the sweet spot for the Ripper, for me, for cruising um, in the way I do, in the way I want to fly, there I will end up with about 90 degrees per second on roll and even lower with pitch. Details on that in the description below the video. Have a look. All the components you will find there too. So don't ask me which component I use. Have a look. Help me out. <laughs> Anyways, um, on to the next, where we will tune that setting and uh, getting some sweet results. Have a look. Just landed after the first flight and uh, aside of having some strange rates, I um, cut it the um, auto-tune feature down to a rate of, a roll rate of 90. Uh, pitch rate to 90 and yaw rate of 30. Um, if you fly the Ripper and you want to have a calm wing, then go for roll and pitch 70% expo because this one is pitchy if you do it right. Uh, don't do it right. 
Well, I have changed the uh, roll rate from 60 degrees per second to 90 because 60 was a bit too tame. It was like running a wheelchair. So don't do that, guys. Go for 90 or something there around and uh, be happy. I will toss it up again, showing you my PIDs, which uh, got <laughs> calculated on that. And it's 2.11.7. Uh, you can see him here. I will mark him down somewhere for you. This first flight, we're going for the second in a minute. Hang on, hold on tight. Sun is setting and we are right in the middle of a sunset. Bye-bye. So yeah, this is how my tuning flights went. And you guys just experienced what I experienced. And this final flight today, we will just add a little more love to the roll and pitch axis as I felt it was necessary. So I guess you will never finish tuning. Find your rates, make it suit you, and get happy with them. Don't forget to limit the rate for auto tuning, as you otherwise will end up in a very pitchy plane. And in case you like that, well, that's the way to go. For cruisers like me, setting a limit will save my day. And now it's time to enjoy the final minutes of the flight with the new PID set. That was better, wasn't it? I guess so too. So yeah, Ripper is flying awesomely at calm. And of course, it's uh, it has a little weak spot. I will show you in perhaps, no, I'll show you in a minute because uh, we need to cut that tuning thing down to what it is, a solved issue, a thing you've done, a task that's completed. So yeah, as a um, the moment where I, I was out a moment uh, on my own with uh, the Ripper and I had tremendously wind. So yeah, maybe not the best moment to fly. Anyways, um, the wing started and began to flutter like so. wings and that's terrible because this oscillation on the wings is um, uh, causing structural damage to the foam which then ends will your wings will rip off simply rip off as plain simple as it sounds it's like that they will simply rip off so the best way to counteract this is just to power down the speed the power which is pushing so the wing gets slower and the, the power the, the forces on the wing just go back and then that's the way you save it. So I flew with it and uh, later on there was no problem. Anyways, I got a bit scared and started in um, stiffening up the wing. And uh, that could be a bit... Uh, because I have got some kind of paranoia. I lost my FX61 with that. And I didn't know what I did back then. But <laughs> now I do. And I don't want to risk my ripper like that. So yeah, um, have a look. Here comes a video where I just reinforce the wings and stop that weak point, for me weak point, um, to occur. Perhaps you need something more in the fuselage itself, but that's up to you. For me, it's fine like it is. That's it. Well, 
As you saw in the video, the wings began to flutter because of some aggressive angle and wind and some circumstances that made it flutter, which I didn't expect after having flying, flown this for some time. It's about uh, to figure the truth that those wings aren't that stiff that I thought they would be. So that's only one reason or one way to fix this and just to reinforce this. I took some carbon spar here, some really thin thing. Um, it's a half centimeter, I guess, by one millimeter. It's really thin. You can take your um, hobby knife and just uh, slice a little um, uh, straight through the foam so you can pop it in there. And that's what it will do. I will remove the foil here Why, with a, a hair dryer. You can then lift it up and put it back again seamlessly and get this into the wing to stiffen it so that it won't flutter on several moments. So yeah, that will solve the issue there. This is how it looks uh, beneath the foil. See here, I did a mark here. There's a, apparently a spar in here between, but that seems not to be enough. So yeah, we will draw a line from there all over to here. And I'll take the sharp knife and uh, just um, cut it in a groove. So we can uh, put some uvu pour in and get that spar standing up straight. That will prevent all the bends and flexiness the wing can have. Okay? The procedure is complete. You can see roughly that the spar has entered the wing. I've um, coated the groove um, with uvu pour before I push the wing uh, the rod in. and. Um, it's pretty narrow, almost invisible. Yeah, that's it. And now it's back to put the foil back over again and let this cure and try to make as least wrinkles as possible. And I guess we're good to go then. That's all it is to it. So now this wing is really stiff because that half centimeter of uh, carbon rod won't bend. Not in that axis at least. So yeah. ah. And another note for the thing with the Yoohoo pour, you don't have to glue all the groove through and soak it with it. It's enough when you take the beginning, some centimeters, some centimeters, some centimeters. It has only to be held in place. It doesn't have to be um, a part of the organism. And I almost said, I almost said, well, I guess you get the idea. Just get a, give it some, uh, some glue in spaces like three, five centimeters and then you're good to go. This will hold the, the rod in place and that's all it is about, holding the rod in place so that the wing can't flex that much and we're good, okay? Now it's your turn, I'm done. Well, yeah, I'm still driving and I'm bored so I make a video for you guys and uh, so I can toss, toss out the next two Ripper videos because episode seven is already uploaded to YouTube since two weeks couldn't show you had to push this out first so yeah have a good one we we'll see you next time and uh, have a look in the description subscribe uh, send me comments uh, questions and uh, much love in form from a donated coffee from uh, that is it that I don't know that that side up there have a look there's Nikon and um, we'll be meeting again have a have a good one be seeing you bye bye and fly safe <laughs>